I belong to you and you belong to me. We all belong together in this vast family of guiding, said Lady Baden-Powell. All of St. Clair Solmes was born on February 22, 1889 at Stubbing Court, Chesterfield, Derbyshire, England. Olive is shown here at the age of 15 months, sitting on the knee of one of her godmothers. Her mother is the woman in the center. The woman who would touch the lives of thousands of girls was herself at six, a little elf with big brown eyes. Olive, shown on the left, was such a shy young girl that once when she went to play tennis at a friend's, she turned around and went home without playing because there were so many people there. Like most young girls, Olive enjoyed make-believe, as here, where she was pretending to be the pony. She preferred a carefree outdoor life and enjoyed sports like cycling with her sister and friends and swimming. Always a lover of animals, Olive is shown here with one of her many pets, her spaniel, Doogie. This picture was taken when she was 20. When she was 23, Olive and her father sailed on the Arcadian for a winter trip to the West Indies. By chance, Robert Baden-Powell was on the same ship, starting his world tour of scouts. Olive and Robert fell in love during the voyage, but had to keep their romance a secret because he was much older than she. In fact, he was only three years younger than her father. The couple thought of having the ship's captain marry them, but decided to wait until Robert completed his world tour. Their engagement was announced on September 28, 1912. The scouts presented them with this car as a wedding gift to use to travel to rallies. As with so many things, they gave the vehicle a pet name, Jam Roll. The couple honeymooned in Algeria. The chief drew this sketch of his new wife cooking their meal over an open fire at their campsite. Lady BP joined in with all her husband's scouting ventures. Here we see her inspecting a troop of Boy Scouts. Early in their marriage, Lady BP became assistant scoutmaster of their village scout troop. As a scoutmaster, she also spent several months during World War I working at a scout recreation hut in France. Excerpts from Lady BP's diary of 1916 show her growing involvement in the movement after taking over the girl guides from Agnes Baden-Powell, Robert's sister. As recognition for her contributions, she was appointed Chief Commissioner in 1916 at the first Commissioner's Conference held in Matlock. In 1918, she was presented with the highest award for adults in guiding, the silver fish. Interestingly, her silver fish was unique. It was produced in gold. Fox Lease, this beautiful house in the New Forest, was presented to the guides in 1922 by Mrs. Anne Archbold Sanderson and took the additional name of Princess Mary House in recognition of the fact that the princess, who was president of the movement and a keen supporter of the guides, gave 10,000 pounds from her wedding presents with which to endow and equip Fox Lease as a training center for guiders. Lady BP and Princess Mary enjoy a campfire at Fox Lease. Lady BP is sitting on the ground to the left of Princess Mary who is on the throne. Olive met guides from many countries at the first world camp at Foxleys. As a young girl, Olive had been encouraged to play the violin. Her father bought this instrument, which was made in 1890, and which she called Diana. After her marriage, Olive never found the time to practice, and in 1925, Diana was presented to the girl guides to be lent to girls making a serious study of music. 
The Chief Guide's standard was a gift from county and overseas commissioners. Expert guide needlewomen took over three years to produce the standard, which Lady BP then took to all major rallies. Nearest the hoist is the trefoil. In the sea, among dolphins and ships, is her golden silver fish. Camping is represented by green tents, and on the fly is the Baden-Powell crest. The Baden-Powells had three children. Peter was born in 1913, Heather on the right in 1915, and Betty in 1917. They were active in brownies and cubs as seen in this picture. A family portrait from left to right, Heather, Lady BP, Lord BP, Betty, Peter. Lady BP was well liked and admired by everyone and was often greeted by a brownie carrying a bouquet. In 1930, Lady BP unveiled the Girl Guide engine number 46168 at Euston, London. Mail got to her no matter how it was addressed. She would often rise at 5 a.m. to answer each letter personally. Lady BP was elected Chief Guide of All the World on July 8, 1931 at a World Conference. We can see from this letter written by her husband to their daughter Heather that it seemed to be a very casual event for him. Lord and Lady Baden-Powell are seen together in January 1931 before setting out on a tour of New Zealand, Australia and South Africa to visit scouts and guides. Robert and Olive shared the same birthday, February 22nd. Each year we celebrate Thinking Day, remembering them and thinking about the worldwide aspects of the movement. The Baden-Powells traveled extensively as scouting and guiding grew. Here, during a trip to Malta, Gibraltar and Italy, they are dressed for a private audience with His Holiness the Pope when he bestowed a blessing upon the scout and guide movements. Lady BP made many trips to Canada. In 1933, she met with the Sarsi tribe, who gave her the name Imonis Aki, meaning the Otter Woman. Previously, the same tribe had named the chief scout Spotted Eagle. Two years later, Lady BP brought her daughters Heather on the left and Betty to Canada. One of her duties while on tour in Canada was to plant a tree in King City, Ontario. No longer the shy young girl, Lady BP became an accomplished public speaker. Lady BP graciously accepts a traditional welcoming garland during a visit to India in 1937. Royalty has long shown an interest in guiding. Here, Lady BP accompanies Princess, later Queen, Juliana of the Netherlands at the 5th World Scout Jamboree in Holland. The first appearance of Princess Elizabeth, the Queen, and Princess Margaret in guide and brownie uniform was at a march past of guides outside St. George's Chapel, Windsor. Lord and Lady BP retired to Paxtu, their home in Kenya, when the chief became ill in 1939. A card of Pax II is from one of the chief's many drawings. Hairi, a hyrax, was the chief guide's pet in Kenya. At Pax II, the chiefs lived quietly, writing, photographing big game, and fishing. Pax II today. In 1941, the founder died. The chief guide was in a quandary as to what to do. A letter from guide headquarters gave her the answer. Come home and see what the guides are doing in the war. You will never forgive yourself if you don't see it. So she set sail for England. Lady BP carried on the work of her husband, 
traveling around the world visiting scout and guide groups. A brownie grand howl during World War II helped to cheer the misery of wartime. She attended a rally of 40,000 French guides and scouts in Paris in 1945. At the first opportunity after the liberation of the European countries, the chief guide visited them to help guides and scouts to gather their scattered units together, because although they had been forbidden to carry on scouting or guiding under Hitler, many had been doing so underground. The Guide International Service, GIS, was formed for the selection and training of guiders for relief work after the war. Here, Lady BP is inspecting the first team that was sent on its mission after the war. Lady BP with the Queen Mother, who was one of the patrons of the Girl Guide Association at the Guide Club in London, England. Lady BP was honoured by many for her service to youth. Poole, the town nearest Brown Sea Island, presented her with the Freedom of Poole in 1950. This was a common sight as she travelled around the world to rallies. Lady BP returned to Canada in 1950, where we see brownies give her the grand howl at Toronto's Varsity Arena. In Canada again in 1962, the chief guide attended a rally at the Queen Elizabeth Building at the Canadian National Exhibition in Toronto. Her continued travels touch girls in Guyana, the West Indies, and Mexico. Canadians were again honoured by a visit in 1965. The Chief Guide celebrated her 80th birthday at a Thinking Day party on February 22, 1969. On that day, she reaffirmed her promise at a service in Westminster Abbey. She was surrounded by admiring guides as she left the Abbey. On one of her trips to Canada, Lady BP visited Doe Lake Girl Guide Camp in Ontario in 1969. During the Diamond Jubilee of guiding, she is a joyful face in a sea of guides. Lady BP outside Olive House, London, England. Her residence in London following the Chief's death was a grace and favour apartment at Hampton Court Palace. She indulged her love of growing flowers on the roof garden of her Hampton Court apartment. Two brownies bring greetings to her on her 87th birthday. In 1977, Lady Baden-Powell died. She was cremated and her ashes were sent to be buried next to her husband's in Kenya. Their markers have the trail sign, I have gone home. Since Lord and Lady BP are buried in their beloved Africa, there are memorial stones in Westminster Abbey. As we see the portrait of the World Chief Guide, which now hangs in the Council Chamber at Commonwealth Headquarters, we remember one of her messages to us. We have got to make this world a better and happier place, and each one of you can do that. Your law and promise is to help other people at all times. The world needs you.